this is Dr. Amahit Nichols with the new FDA approvals podcast, and this is the information on the latest US FDA approvals for the week of December 16th through the 22nd. This podcast is being released on Monday, December 25th, and that is Christmas Day. So if you're celebrating, I wanted to wish you a very wonderful Merry Christmas. And if you're not celebrating, I hope you have a nice day off. <laughs> All right. So before I start today, I did want to assure you that the news that I present in this podcast results from my searching the medical news every day and collecting the pieces I think are most important. The main thing is that I wanted to point out that I have no pharmaceutical alliances and no one is paying me for this. Although I do hope that if you or your company ever needs medical writing assistance, you'll think of my company, Nascent Medical, nascentmc.com. But should this podcast ever become a sponsored entity, I promise it will be really clear what is a commercial and what is not. All right. Thank you. I just want to point that out. So first up this week, the FDA has approved the first test to assess if there's a risk of opioid use addiction in certain individuals. The test called AVERT-D has been developed by Solve-D Health. AVERT-D is intended to be used before the first use of oral opioid painkillers in patients who are being considered for a 4-30 to day prescription for the treatment of acute pain, such as patients scheduled to undergo a planned surgical procedure. The test is for patients 18 years and older who have not previously used oral opioid painkillers and involves swabbing the cheek of the patient to collect a DNA sample. The sample is then used to determine if there is a combination of 15 genetic variants that may be associated with an elevated risk of developing opioid use disorder. Patients must consent to the use of the test. According to the FDA, AVERT-D is not intended to be used in patients being treated for chronic pain. The test is being met with some skepticism by experts. There is a link to an article from CNN in the show notes that I think covers that pretty well. And if you'd like to delve further into that, then please do look at the show notes. The FDA granted the approval to Autogenomics, which was acquired by Solve-D in 2019. The FDA has granted approval to Birch Triterpenes Topical Gel, that's known as the brand name Phil Suvez, for the treatment of junctional epidermolysis bullosa, JEB, and dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa, DEB, also known as butterfly disease. This marks the first FDA-approved therapy for partial thickness wounds associated with JEB, and that's a severe and rare form of EB that causes blistering from infancy. And the new agent is available for individuals age six months and older, and it's a significant advancement in the management of this incapacitating skin disorder characterized by extreme skin fragility. The at-home application of this gel integrates into existing treatment routines. The approval granted to Chiesi Global Rare Diseases follows the May 2023 approval of BVAC, that's also called Vijuvac, which is a gene therapy for DEB and further expands the treatment landscape. Also this week, the FDA has granted full approval for budesonide delayed release capsules known as the brand name Tarpeo as a treatment to reduce the loss of kidney function in adults with IgA nephropathy, IgAN, who are at risk of disease progression. Budesonide is a corticosteroid and a B-cell immunomodulator specifically designed to target pathogenic galactose-deficient IgA1 antibodies, which are implicated in the causation of IgAN. The medication is indicated for the treatment of proteinuria in adults with primary IgAN who are at risk for rapid progression of the disease, irrespective of the levels of proteinuria. The agent was initially authorized in 2021 under accelerated FDA approval. The full approval is based on findings from a multi-center, double-blind phase 3 NEFIGARD clinical trial data. 
This marks the first time a treatment for IgAN has been fully approved by the FDA based on a measure of kidney function. Budesonide is also the only therapy currently approved for primary IgAN that has been shown to potentially reduce the loss of kidney function, according to a written release from the FDA. The approval was granted to the Swedish company Caliditas Therapeutics. So as you may know, the AMA Manual of Style is the main style guide used in the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry, which you may belong to if you're listening to this. I have distilled what I think are the most important things to know in a downloadable cheat sheet so you can make sure you get the basics of the AMA Manual of Style correct in your work. To download the cheat sheet, go to learnamastyle.com. That's learnamastyle.com. And I hope you'll find that helpful. Also last week, the FDA approved a plantaricin that's known as a Wainua, W-A-I-N-U-A, for the treatment of polyneuropathy associated with hereditary transthyretin mediated amyloidosis, that's H-A-T-T-R-P-N, in adults. H-A-T-T-R-P-N leads to rapid peripheral nerve damage and is often fatal within a decade if untreated. Eplontercin is a ligand conjugated antisense oligonucleotide, LICA, designed to decrease the production of TTR protein in ATTR, a condition in which TTR is mutated. The approval is based on a 35-week interim analysis from Neurotransform Phase 3 trial, and that was published in the October 17th issue of JAMA. Additionally, eplontercin is under evaluation in the cardiotransform phase three trial for the potential treatment of ATTR cardiomyopathy, and that's a systemic and fatal condition leading to progressive heart failure, often resulting in death within three to five years of onset. Eplontercin has been granted orphan drug designation in the US and EU with availability in the US expected in January, 2024. Other agents already approved for HATTRPN include patisiron, butisiron, and inotericin, all of which interfere with the production of TTR protein. Eplontericin is the only approved medicine that can be self-administered via an auto-injector, however. This week's approval was granted to AstraZeneca and Ionis. Also this week, the FDA has issued clearance for an investigational new drug application for NRX101, which is a patented blend of D-cycloserine, GCS, and lurazidone. NRX101 is being developed for the treatment of complicated urinary tract infections, which affect about 3 million Americans annually. According to a press release from the manufacturer NRX Pharmaceuticals, NRX101 comes at a time when Americans are increasingly facing intravenous antibiotic therapy and even hospitalization and death from pathogens that were readily controlled a generation ago. DCS, which is an antibiotic, is also an NMDA antagonist, which can lead to psychotomimetic effects such as hallucinations and confusion. And this led to its disuse as an antibiotic in the United States. However, the addition of of lorazidone helps mitigate these effects. NRX Pharmaceuticals is also awaiting the FDA's decision on their request for a qualified infectious disease product QIDP designation for NRX 101. The QIDP designation pertains to the development of antibacterial and antifungal drug products that treat serious or life-threatening infections. Also last week, the FDA issued a complete response letter declining to approve Merck's drug gefepixent for chronic cough, making this the second rejection of this agent in less than two years. According to the FDA, gefepixent did not meet substantial evidence of effectiveness for treating refractory chronic cough or unexplained chronic cough in adults. Gefepixent is a selective antagonist of P2X3 receptors with some activity against the P2X23 receptor subtype. 
P2X3 receptors are ATP gated ion channels found on sensory C fibers of the vagus nerve in the airways. Currently, there are no approved treatments in the US for coughing bouts that don't go away despite treatment of underlying conditions or have no identifiable cause. The press release from Merck is available in the show notes if you'd like to look at this further. Is your company in need of medical writing assistance? Visit our website at nascentmc.com. That's nascent, N-A-S-C-E-N-T, mc.com. Our native English-speaking MD and PhD-level medical writers create fast turnaround needs assessments, medical news pieces, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and more all for the price of a single freelancer, but with a much wider selection and a background in the specialty you need. And we're pretty much always available. Nascent Medical, we're here so that you never have to be without excellent medical writing help. NascentMC.com. So despite the bad news from Merck regarding gefepixent, the FDA did accept for priority review a new biologics license application, BLA, for V116, that's Merck's investigational 21-valent pneumococcal conjugate vaccine specifically designed to help prevent invasive pneumococcal disease and pneumococcal pneumonia in adults. The FDA grants priority review to medicines and vaccines that, if approved, would provide a significant improvement in the safety or effectiveness of the treatment or prevention of a serious condition. The application for V116 is based in part on data from STRIDE 3, a pivotal phase 3 trial which evaluated the immunogenicity, tolerability, and safety of V116 compared to PCV20, that's pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, in adults who had not previously received a pneumococcal vaccine. V116 is specifically designed to address Streptococcus pneumoniae serotypes predominantly responsible for adult pneumococcal disease, and that includes eight unique serotypes, which account for approximately 30% of adult disease. The serotypes covered by V116 are responsible for approximately 83% of invasive pneumococcal disease in individuals 65 years of age and older. B116 is designed to be administered as a single dose. The FDA has set a target action date of June 17th, 2024. And finally, this week, a quick mention of Sotorasib in NSCLC. The KRAS G12C inhibitor, Lumacras Sotosarib, received FDA's accelerated approval in May 2021 for KRAS G12C mutated non small cell lung cancer. So, upcoming on December 24th, that's Sunday, the Sunday before Christmas, the FDA will decide whether or not to grant this agent full approval. The approval may not happen, though, because in October of this year, the FDA's Oncologic Drugs Advisory Committee, ODAC, voted 10-2 against full approval of Lumacras in this indication, contending that the data from the confirmatory Phase 3 Code Break 200 study could not reliably be interpreted. Now, there is a link in the show notes from OncLive that came out this week that provides a very useful analysis of Code Break 200 and the ODAC ruling. And that's just a recommendation, of course. The FDA does not always follow the rulings of its advisory committees. So the Sarab will still be available for clinical use regardless of the upcoming decision. And by the time you hear this, it probably won't be upcoming. So hopefully we'll cover it in a future episode of the podcast. All right, that's it for today. And again, a Merry Christmas to everybody that is listening if you're celebrating. And I hope you have a wonderful Monday. 